A man can receive nothing, no thing, except it be given him from heaven. What does that mean? Whatever you receive comes to you from your highermost self-definition. Self-awareness is the whole secret of life, the whole secret of experience. All else is commentary. You'll find me redundant, and I intend to be, because these are not just intellectual exercises here. I'm not interested in just imparting to you some beautiful theories to tickle your ears or to impress you with my expertise. What we give you here, you can use instantly. So again, I say, you are free to modify, to change, to build your self-image. But once that self-image is set in the subconscious mind, free will ends and what I call subconscious compulsion takes over. If you don't like being poor, you are free such as it is, but this is self-awareness. On this side of self-awareness, let's say, free will operates. Because you're free to establish a self-image, a self-awareness. But once self-awareness is established, subconscious compulsion sets in. Now, Reverend Ike says you can be what you want to be, have what you want to have, yes and no. If you identify yourself as the one who is being, doing, and having, you will have it. Because whatever belongs to your self-awareness must come to you. Suppose, for example, uh, somebody wants to become a millionaire. Can just anybody become a millionaire? Yes and no. So we're both correct. All right, suppose you want to become a millionaire. What must you do? You must establish in your subconscious mind the awareness of being a millionaire. If you do not establish in your subconscious mind the awareness or the image of being a millionaire, you can't. But once you establish in your mind the thought, the feeling, the emotions of a millionaire, you'll be subconsciously compelled to do all that is necessary to become a millionaire, and you will become. Now, the words from the lips of Jesus, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, comes into play under subconscious compulsion. And by the way, that's my term. I never heard it before. Because anything that you establish as a part of your self-awareness, it happens automatically past that point. You establish wealth as a part of your self-awareness, it'll be easy for, for you to be wealthy. It'll just keep coming to you. Here again from the scriptures, to him that hath, to him it shall be given. To him who has a certain self-awareness, all that belongs to that subconscious self-awareness will be drawn unto him. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men, I will draw all manifestations unto me. Whatever awareness, whatever image of myself that I lift up in my self-awareness, it will draw all manifestations like unto itself unto me. This is why here we're constantly teaching you to identify yourselves with health, happiness, love, success, and prosperity. And here is something which will tell some of you religious people why certain things do not happen in your praying. You see, here again, I don't care how you pray and ask God to do certain things and to give certain things to you unless you, in your mind, become the person Let's just take something for instance. People who pray for healing, Lord, heal me. The healing is not going to take place until and unless that person becomes aware of himself as a healed person, uh, as a healthy person. And I've seen this happen and it's, it's somewhat heartbreaking for religious people because here again it's, it's a case, as I've said before, where people are morally right but mentally wrong. Lord, help me. Lord, do this. But whatever you want to be, to do, and to have, you must first of all become aware of yourself as the one who is being, doing, and having. And once you do that, you don't really have to worry. You'll be led to do the right things. You'll, you'll be compelled to do the right things. Uh, some people have gotten hung up by uh, saying, well, Reverend Ike, uh, you just tell people to become aware of themselves and, and to visualize that they're being, doing, and having all of those good things. Uh, do they have to work for any of those things? You know, they didn't follow me all the way, I could tell. So now you just teach those people, and you know we're good on visualization. 
but we're very good on that. He says, you just teach people to just sit down and visualize themselves being and doing and having all of these things. Uh, uh, is there any work involved? <laughs> yes, there's all kind of work involved. But if you become aware of yourself, for example, as a millionaire, subconscious compulsion takes over and it will lead you to take the right steps. There's some people who want certain things and they try to get certain things, they try to become certain things and do certain things without having, as Emmett Fox would say, the mental equivalent, uh, the equivalent self-awareness. And this is why it's so hard to be, to do, and to have. Anytime you find yourself struggling to be, to do, or to have something, it means that you have not established the self-awareness of yourself in being and doing and having. So your work is first of all to establish the awareness of yourself as the person who is being, doing and having the good which you desire. And then you practice Sabbath. That's when you rest. You shall not need to fight after that. This is why so many times I've watched, I've watched people break their backs and their necks working hard year in, year out trying to accomplish certain things and just never could quite accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. It was because they did not establish the self-awareness which is equivalent to what they desired. Look at your ideal self in your mind. Acquaint yourself with your ideal self and the good which belongs to your ideal self-image will come unto you. You find that once you establish a positive self-image of yourself being, doing and having the good which you desire, as Reverend Ike would say, everything will just start clicking. You just start meeting seemingly by accident all of the right people for all of the right purposes. All of the right things will just start happening. But you'll find life a struggle at being, doing, and having until you establish the equivalent self-awareness. The self-awareness which belongs to that which you want to be, to do, and to have. This is why for a period of one year in particular, you remember I exclusively taught what? Visualization. Teaching you how to see yourself. Teaching you how to identify yourself with that which you desire to be, to do, and to have. And those of us sitting here, we know that it has worked. We witnessed it work for people. Some people came here by the thousands when I, and went through these visualization techniques with me for the first time and things just began to happen. All right. Somewhere I read this, when I look at you, I'm disappointed. When I look at myself, I'm disgusted. But when I look at him, I'm satisfied. What this really is, it's a contrast between the positive self-image and the negative self-image. When I look from a human concept of self, of myself, upon a human concept of others, I'm disappointed and disturbed. Humans looking upon the human scene are always disappointed and disturbed. And here in this philosophy, we do not teach people simply to think of themselves as mere human beings. A worm crawling upon the dust. Some of us in our religious upbringing, this was instilled into us. And some of us even went to church and sang that hymn, For such a worm as I. Too many of us have been taught to think of ourselves as simply a birth certificate waiting for a death certificate. What a poor self-image. But there's the divine self within you which we teach you to identify with. And another beautiful hymn indicates that human lives through many scenes are drawn and vexed with trifling cares. While thine eternal thought moves on, thine undisturbed affairs, there is that within you which is undisturbed. When I permit myself for one moment to get too caught up in an outer scene of disorder, I bring myself back to my divine self by simply affirming the divine order is in order. Say that with me, come on. The divine order is in order. And it's good to know that there is a divine order that is in order and it's not going to get out of order. And then I decree we are in it and of it. Come on, let's do the whole thing. The divine order is in order. We are in it and of it. Or you can say, I am in it and of it. Come on. The divine order is in order. I am in it and of it. If all your self-identity contains is just the idea of yourself being some poor little worm. As someone has said, I believe, in this way, a pawn in the hand of fate, then you're really in trouble. But I'm part of the divine order. The divine order is established within me together. The divine order is established within me. 
And I must not permit myself to get so caught up in the scene of human disorder that I forget that the divine order is in order. Well, now, this is where my shouting religious nature begins to come out a little, you know. Because it just makes me happy when I think about that. Because, you see, this divine order that resides at the center of me, this is the Father's house. And in the words of the spiritual, everything is all right in the Father's house. And this is why, again, from the Psalms, the Jewish hymn book, the, the 91st Psalm, it opens by saying, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But you see here again, science comes into play. You have to know that the secret place is within you. And when you know that the secret place, the place of peace is within you, you're free from the confusion of the world. And you're not going to get free from the confusion of the world until you know where the secret place of the Most High is. And here again in another psalm, David, the sweet singer of Israel, said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He will hide me in his pavilion. He will set me upon a rock. And you see, people need to discover this rock, this divine foundation, which is within, and learn to build your self-awareness upon this rock of divine self-awareness. And then you see, the world can't shake you anymore. As we used to sing, picking cotton in the south, we used to sing, then the world can't do you no harm. So let me ask you another question. Where do you live? And don't answer out loudly. Where do you live? You'd better learn how to live in the secret place of the Most High. You'd better learn how to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dr. Miller one day spoke to a very outstanding clergyman and said, How are you? And the clergyman began to complain about all the different things that were going wrong. And so Dr. Miller said to him, You need to get out of your human self and get into your divine self. And this sort of sums up our philosophy or of what we're trying to get people to really do. Get out of the human self-image and enter into the house of the Lord. Enter into the divine idea of yourself. Stop saying, oh well, I'm only human. When you say I'm only human, you let yourself in for everything that humans suffer. This is why, again, the prophet Isaiah says, cease from man whose breath is in his nostrils. Stop thinking of yourself simply as a pawn in the hand of fate. Stop thinking of yourself as, well, I'm only human. I declare that I'm not human, I'm divine. And as I said before, I love Jesus more than I ever did, but I have given up the Jesus of Christian misinterpretation because the Jesus of formal theology, there was a conversation between Jesus and Peter, who later became the Apostle Peter. And Jesus asked the question, Who do you say that I am? And the answer was, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But you see, this not only applies to one man, Jesus, but the Christ, the Son of the living God, is the true identity of every man. And when a man comes to know who he is in God and who God is in him, he then ceases to be merely human and he becomes divine. I want to be a bit redundant and I want to tell you something so that you can change now. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you can get out of the negative human experience. Stop thinking, stop saying, I'm only human. Because then you identify yourself with all of the miseries and misfortunes that humanity is heir to. Identify yourself as the son of the living God and you become heir to a divine inheritance.